welcome to the Vision Gym Battle Training Podcast. Appreciate you guys who are tuned in today. Everybody listening on Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, or Google Podcasts, which actually was asked this week if my podcast is on Google Podcasts. Answer is yes, it is. So if you want to listen on there, check that out. You'll find it. Just search it. Um, SoundCloud, Pandora, wherever else my podcast may be at. Honestly, at this point, it's probably in like five other places. I don't even know what they are. So Basically, wherever podcasts are found, you can find it. So shout out to all you guys who are listening right now. And of course, everybody who's watching on YouTube as well. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new on YouTube, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe as well. Um, new podcast coming every week on Sunday. And um, if you guys have not followed me on Instagram, at Vision Driven Basketball, go ahead and do that for me. You guys have questions for me, send me a DM. Um, you know, Hopefully, you guys learn something or find some sort of value in my posts as well. Or my stories, whatever. Sometimes I just go on these tangents on my story. Sometimes I just, I don't know, sometimes something just sets me off and I just go off on a on a tangent of my story. That happens from time to time. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you follow me on Instagram so that you get to see it. Um, and of course, if you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts, do me a favor, scroll down to the bottom of the page and leave a review for me. Let me know what you think. At the beginning of every show, I read new reviews. I don't have any new reviews this week, but when I get a new review, I'll read it at the beginning of the show. So again, Apple Podcasts, scroll down to the bottom of the page, leave a review for me, let me know what you think of the show. So let's hop into it. Um, a question that I get often, I got again this past week, and I figured I'd make a video dedicated to it, a podcast dedicated to it more specifically, um, is just the question of, how many times per day do you have to work out, right? That was the question that, bit, that bit, essentially that I got. I was like, hey, coach, how many times a day do I need to work out if I want to do this? If I want to play college basketball. I want to make it to the NBA. If I want to do this, do that, do that. And so it's, it's a good question. Um, and I want to talk about that today because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and I want to give my two cents on it. And hopefully, you know, what the, the information I give you help you guys to be able to develop at the quickest rate you possibly can. That's the goal, right? The goal is not that, you know, you outwork any, but the goal is that you develop at the best rate possible for you. That's what it comes down to. So we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, The first point I want to make, and I think the most important point of this, is that you don't get a medal for outworking anybody, right? Or substitute medal for trophy. You don't get a trophy for outworking anybody. And I put outworking in, in air quotes, too. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, you know, outworking people. You don't you don't get a medal. You don't get a trophy for that. I've said this before. I've used this analogy before, but there's 450 players in the NBA. Right. Give or take. Right. Maybe, you know, whatever. Give or take. But around 450 throughout the 30 NBA teams, players who are on a roster. Um, when we look at those 450 players, right. They're all phenomenal. There's 450 million basketball players in the world. Those are the top 450 of them, which I believe is 0.00005% or 1%. Yeah, 0.00001%. Maybe one more zero mixed in there. I don't know. But point being is that you are a phenomenal player if you're in the top 450 in the NBA. But let's think about this. Guy... 450, right? The last guy in the NBA. Why is he in over guy 451 or guy 452? 400, guy 452 is still an incredible basketball player, but he's two spots away from being on an NBA roster, right? That's something to think about, okay? Why is it that guy 379 is in over guy 504? Is it because guy 379 outworked guy 504, right? Is guy number 410, is he in the NBA because he outworked guy number 473? Did he put in more time than that guy? Is that why he's in the NBA and the other guy's not? Probably not. Maybe. I mean, there's a 50 50, there's a 50 50 chance that that's the case, right? Maybe he did technically outwork that guy, put more hours in than that guy, but there's a good chance he also didn't do that, right? There's a good chance that there's some other factor that allows that guy to be in the NBA over this other guy, okay? The point of this being is that it's not just about who works harder, right? It's not just about that. There's, there's guy, you know, guy number 1,000 out there, still an incredible player, still a pro, right? Guy number 1,000 out there might have outworked guy number 413. He might have put in more time than that guy has, but... Guy number 413 might be bigger, faster, stronger. So he's in the NBA, right? Or 
as we'll get into, maybe guy 413, maybe he didn't work as many hours in the gym as guy 1000, but maybe the time he spent in the gym was much more focused or much more conducive to development than guy number 1000, right? There's a bunch of factors to look at, and, and hard work is not factor number one when we talk about who makes it and who doesn't. It's not factor number one. It's certainly important, but we can't just say, oh, this guy worked out for two hours a day for you know, high school and college, so that's why he's in the NBA, and this guy only worked out for an hour and a half every day, so that's why. That's not how it works, right? So just because you work out for four hours and your teammate works out for one hour doesn't mean that you're going to be better than your teammate or you're going to develop quicker than your teammate will. Not how it works, right? Sometimes it might work that way, but it, not always. A lot of times it won't because there's other factors that come into play as well. So that's something to think about, right? I think a big thing is that players want to say, oh, I work out for this long, I do this every day. And that almost becomes like what they care about more so than the actual development. Oh, am I actually getting better, right? Or am I, am I stagnating a little bit? Is this actually the best use of my time? Or do I just like going out and feeling like I put in a lot of work because I feel good about it, right? And then I can tell people, yeah, you know, coach, I work out for three hours every day. But then you get on the court, your teammate who only works out for an hour a day outplays you, right? So what's your coach going to do? Oh, well, you know, he works out for three hours a day, so I guess I'll give him the playing time, even though he's not playing as well as his teammate who only works out for an hour. But, I mean, I got to give it to the guy who works out for longer. No coach is going to say that, right? Maybe you get the benefit of the doubt off the bat, but when it comes down to it, coaches want to win games, and they're going to play guys who help them win games. So that, that really doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, the results are what matters. When you step out on the court during a game, how well you play is what matters. How well you play determines if you get a medal or if you get a trophy, right? Because if you don't do those things then, and you don't play well, then you don't get a trophy. You don't win. It doesn't matter if your team put in more time than the other team. If the other team's better than you, then you don't get a trophy for it. It's simple as that. So the focus should not be on how long you're working out every day or how many workouts it is per day. The focus needs to be on how much better you are getting every day, how much you're developing every day. When that's what your focus is, then that's when you're going to start to see those results that you want. That's when you're going to start to develop the way that you want. And that's where the work actually starts to pay off because we're not training to get better at training. It, you know, We're training to get better in the context of a game. So that's something to keep in mind, right? Does the length or the amount of the workouts that you do each day determine who actually sees better results, right? No, it doesn't. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this. So the first thing to understand about how many workouts you should have per day is that your best effort is required if you want to see those results, right? So if you can't give your best effort to three workouts a day, then it's a waste of time to try and do that third one, right? If your third workout of the day is going at 70% because you're just so tired because you went hard in the first two, what's the point of that third one? You don't play a game at 70%, right? You have to go out and play at 100%, you know, unless your head and shoulders better than everybody, then maybe you can go out and play at 70%. But most, most of you out there can't do that. Most of you have to actually go out and play at 100% if you want to be successful, okay? So your, our training should prepare us for that, meaning we should be going 100%. So if we're trying to say, oh, we got to get in three workouts today, and that's at the expense of, you know, one or maybe both, or maybe all three of those workouts, if you know in the morning, you know, let's say you're going to go to the court and you're going to go to the weight room, and then later in the day, you're going to go back to the court. If you know on that first workout that you're going to be back in the court, so you decide to kind of take it easy a little bit, you, you decide to reserve a little bit of energy, then at that point, let's say you went 80% for that workout, and then you come back later, to, later that day, you already went to the weight room and worked, now you're pretty tired, you only go 70%, you've literally got in no work at 100% that day. So now your teammate who goes to, or your opponent or whoever who goes to the gym and has one workout where he goes 100% for an hour, he had an hour that day where he was going 100% working game speed, right? And you had zero hours that day where you did that. Maybe you were in the gym longer, but was that time more productive? No, it wasn't, okay? So there's a good chance that that other player is going to develop faster than you are and is going to see better results than you are because his work, her work is focused and yours is not. And his work or her work is going to translate and your work is not going to. So that's something to think about uh, when it comes to how many workouts per day. It really is how many workouts per day can you actually give 100% to, right? It, I, you know, I get questions about, hey, can I have two 
two or can I have three two hour workouts a day? And yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna tell you not to do that, but the vast majority of players out there can't handle that, right? They just can't go 100% for six hours a day on the court. You just can't do it, right? I mean, think about, you know, you guys who have been to like these long day camps, right? Where you'll go to a, maybe it's like an elite camp or you'll go to like some basketball camp and you play basketball for like, you know, eight hours that day, right? First of all, it's a little bit different because typically you have breaks mixed into those and different sorts of things. Um, but also it's different because you're working out with a bunch of other players. So naturally the adrenaline is going to be going. That's going to push you a little bit farther than you probably would in a normal workout. You're going to have a lot of coaches there generally who are going to be pushing you as well. So if you're just going out by yourself for six hours a day, chances are by the time you get to hour four, five, six, you're not going to go 100%. So what's the point? There's not much of a point. It's really just wasted time at that point. And if you know you're going to be there for six hours, affects hour one and hour two to the point where those are not as hard as you can go, then it, it essentially negates all the work that you're doing, right? And then your development is almost a flat line at that point, right? Maybe with a little bit of a general increase, but not as much as if you just said, okay, you know what, hour, you know, two hours today, right? I'm going to go 100%. And you do that, and then that development comes from there, right? That's something to think about when we talk about you know, what's important during your workouts. The other thing to think about is, you know, if you get, you know, I'll get DMs from players talking about, hey, coach, you know, I work out for like eight hours a day. I'm having all these knee problems and all these ankle problems and all this stuff. Like, what should I do? And that's another thing to think about, right? Um, I was talking to my guy, Gabe Macias, um, from Game Time Elite Training on my podcast last week. He was talking about how he was, you know, when he was younger, middle school, high school, he was like that. He was, you know, he was, always working got people would tell him like hey man you got to relax a little bit you got to take take a couple days off you got to take it easy for a little bit because you're doing too much he's like no no it's fine it's fine he kept on pushing kept on pushing kept on pushing and then had all these major 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 injuries and essentially derailed his entire career because he'd get back from an injury and then have another major injury right and that lasted through high school and college and you know sometimes injuries are just kind of unlucky but also when you really put a lot of stress in your body you don't give yourself adequate time to, re to recover then that's where you really put yourself at an increased risk for injury as well right whether that be overuse injuries uh, or even more major ones that that can really you know derail your your entire career um, and, and, or at the very least put a pause on it so that's something to think about as well is that if you're really really going hard you have to make sure you're giving yourself time to recover Right? You're giving yourself days off and, and, and stuff like that. You're, give, you're, you're listening to what your body tells you to do because sometimes you're, you, know, you might wake up, you might have a, a three workouts planned, but you know, you're feeling really horrible. Your body is super, super sore. So sometimes it's okay to take it light that day. Right? Maybe only do one workout. Maybe take the day completely off and get back to it the next day. Right? That's not necessarily a bad thing. I think a lot of players look at it as like being soft or being a quitter. And that's not, that's not at all. It's, it's literally just working smart, right? Assuming that you have a plan for it. If you just wake up and you don't feel like going to do it, that's different. But if you wake up and your body is telling you like, hey, I don't like, we got to take it a little lighter today, then that's okay, right? That's not, that's not a horrible thing. And long term, it's probably the best thing for you. So that's something to think about. Third thing I want to talk about, I made a video on this. And I'm going to link that above um, just talking about kind of a format. So when it comes down to like specifics, so what, you know, how many workouts do you need to do per day, right? When we, come, when we talk about specifics, uh, there's different formats you can follow. Again, I can't really give you a, a definite like, okay, you have to do this, you have to do this. Everybody's different, right? I might need something different from what you need. Or, you know, your teammate might need something different from what you need. Or that other person might need something different from what another person might need. So, you know, for example, let's say that I want to, you know, be able to jump higher, right? And maybe I'm, you know, super skinny, not very strong, but I'm, I'm really quick, right? So maybe if I go in the weight room and I put on a lot of strength, right, on my squat or on my deadlift, maybe that's going to translate to me jumping significantly higher because I just lack strength. Meanwhile, you know, some massive bodybuilder who already has a, a ton of strength, maybe isn't the quickest, maybe he would benefit more from doing some plyometric work and some, some quickness work. Um, and maybe that would be the best thing for, for that guy, right? It's just, it, we might need different things, okay? So that's something to think about as well. You know, somebody might respond well to working out twice per day and, and maybe they don't respond quite as well to three times. 
And again, there's just, it's just differences. So I'm not going to say, and generally, there's never a time where I can say, okay, you have to do this, you have to do this, because everybody's a little bit different. So that being said, um, you know, during the off season, working out three times a day is definitely a, a doable thing um, for the majority of players. But it requires it just requires you to be smart about it, right? Some days, like I said, you might have to take it lighter. Um, but I'll just give you a couple examples of like what that could look like. So maybe we'll say during the morning, wake up and you go get your encore workout in, right? So maybe that's an hour, two hours, whatever. You go get that work in. And then the afternoon, you go and get your weight room workout in, okay? Upper body, lower body, whatever it may be that day, mix, whatever your workout is in the weight room. Maybe you go do that. And then maybe in the evening, you, you play, right? Maybe it's a, a, a team workout or it's a pickup or whatever it may be. Like that's just another example of you being able to fit three things into your day. So that's one thing. The other thing you can do is, you know, let's say in the morning you get up, you go do your on-court workout and then immediately do your off-court workout or switch. Maybe do your off-court workout, your, your weight room stuff first, then you go to the court, whatever. Like maybe that's what you do first. Then you come back later in the day and maybe you either play again or you get into another workout. So there, that's just a couple examples that I'll give you. But I want you guys to make sure you check out the video that I linked above uh, because it goes really in depth. It's like a 27 minute video where I break down exactly how to kind of format your schedule and figure out what works best for you, what you should be working on, all those sorts of things. So I would say if you haven't watched that before or even if you have watched it and you don't remember it, go check it out. It's going to help you out for sure. Um, and like I said, guys, there's there's a ton of different ways to go about doing this. It's about figuring out what works best for you, what makes you feel the best, and how you know what makes you develop the best. Again, don't think that you have to be working. You know, your teammate works out for three hours a day, so you have to work out for three and a half at least. That that like you, it, it's not about what anybody else is doing. Really, it it does not matter. It only matters what it, you're doing and what's best for you. That's what your focus has to be on. Um, and again, all about the quality of it. Right. If the quality is not there, if you can't be going 100 percent, then it's it's not really worth your time and it's not really going to help you all that much. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Um, and the other thing to think about, too, is, is that I mentioned this. It's important to have off days. OK, it's important to take a day or two off every week um, just to give yourself time to recover. Uh, and again, long term, that's going to be what's best for you, because by the time you get to your games, you want to be at 100 percent. Right. We don't want to, you know, you don't want to beat yourself down so much that by the time you get to the games, you're only at 80, 85 percent or lower. Right. We don't want that. So you want to make sure that you are focused on, you know, that quality, but also giving yourself some time to recover as well. If you really are going to go hard during your workouts, as you should be. OK, so again, I hope that helps you guys out. Hope that answered the question um, and gave you guys kind of a roadmap going forward on on what your schedule should look like. Um, like I said, check that video out above. Uh, if you guys have not already on you know, your schedule and the format and your workouts, all that sort of stuff, it's going to help you with that. Um, again, I appreciate you guys who are listening to Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you are not. YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe if you're new. And give me a follow on, on Instagram at Vision Driven Basketball. And by the way, uh, I'll also link down below in the description uh, my free lead perimeter score workout. If you guys have not checked that out, it's, gonna, it's a workout that's going to help you guys develop some of those perimeter skills. Uh, completely free. I'll send that right to you. Just click the top link in my description below. I'll get that to you. Again, I appreciate you guys listening. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.